Okay. So good morning. Uh, again, I am Ronnie. I am from the Philippines. Uh, today, I'll be presenting to you a new venture that my team will be doing, uh, hopefully starting uh, next year. It's entitled Community uh, Cobotel Community Hotel. So it's uh, an entrepreneurial venture. Engineering peace through community-centered tourism. Uh, by the way, I'm Ronnie. I am from General Statistics Philippines. Uh, I do two things. First, I do advocacy uh, work. I'm with the National Youth Parliament. We go to the Senate and the lower house in the Congress and we talk to legislators for uh, legislations that we want for the young people in the Philippines. As of now, we have three uh, target legislations that we would want to pass on the national level. One is the National Teenage Pregnancy uh, law. Uh, the Philippines is number one in Asia and Pacific in the right in, of teenage pregnancy. We're also number one in Asia in the AIDS. So, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other law that we're trying to pass right now is the single use plastic law. So, incentivizing companies who, who do away with single use plastic and imposing taxes on companies who use single use plastics. Uh, and the third is the agripreneurship law, uh, providing more funds for agriculture. As I mentioned a uh, while ago, uh, the Philippine GDP is dependent on agriculture. Forty percent of our agriculture, uh, of, our, of our economy, depends on agriculture. However, only three percent of the national budget is given to agriculture. On the other side, I do a lot of startups. So I have an IT company. Uh, we provide solutions for problems that we see in the society. That's why we call our company Outsourcing Solution Philippines. Uh, we provide IT services and uh, manage websites for private and public organizations. This is our biggest project yet in partnership with the National Youth Commission Office of the President. Uh, this will be launched, this app will be launched uh, by January next year. So it's already available on Google Store. You could also download it if you're interested in the app. The app provides uh, information opportunities for young people in the Philippines for scholarships, trainings, uh, and events abroad. Uh, this also uh, will be used by our Sangguniang Kapataan. The Philippines is the only country in the world who has the Sangguniang Kapataan mechanism. Uh, it's like a youth council. We have a law in the Philippines that requires young people to be representatives in the government, in the local uh, level. So we have legislators that are young people that are elected through the Sangguna Kamatayan. And we would want to help them communicate with young people more through this application. We gave this to the national government for free. Uh -huh. So my team gave this uh, project to the national government for free. Ayan. Uh, I'd like to talk first about conflict in Mindanao. Uh, that's, I think everybody knows about uh, the upcoming conflict in Mindanao. As of now, we have four different groups that uh, is one of the that are one of the reasons why there are conflicts in Mindanao. Uh, there are Muslim separatists, the MILF, MNLF, uh, communist insurgencies like the NPA. Clan militias, uh, there are many powerful families in Mindanao who have their own military. There are even uh, groups in Mindanao who have more firepower than the military itself. And of course, criminal terrorist groups like Abu Sayyaf and Bounty and whatnot. There are many reasons why there are conflicts and insurgencies. First is poverty. So in case of uh, the terrorist groups like Abu Sayyaf, the people in their area don't have any other means to, to earn, so they they resort to kidnapping and uh, whatnot. Uh, other issues is in religion uh, and history. Actually, the Bangsamoro struggle, uh, which a few people only see the root causes of these struggles from historical background to the religious background. Uh, there are also lots of crimes and corruption, especially in families uh, that are so big in Mindanao that are fighting clans like the Magundadatus, the Apatuans, and other clans who have their own military and who have their own firepower in the communities. And violent incidents done by government. So there are also government uh, actions that actually trigger uh, 
people, especially young people. I did a study before also with young soldiers, and we have a lot in South Cotabato and in Davao region. So these people have many issues, starting ranging from poverty up to being harassed by the military. That's why they joined these rebel and separatist groups because of these experiences. Now that's the bad side. I would like you to look at the good side of the Philippines. So again, we have 7,007. We have 7,600 islands. Before it was just 7,100 something. Uh, and as we go on, uh, government have discovered that there are islets. Uh, that's why as of now, the tally is 7,600 islands. Tourism is very big in the Philippines. It's a beautiful country. Um, we have good food, good places, and great people. 12.7% uh, of the Philippine GDP is from tourism. This is how big tourism is. Uh, mining industry in the Philippines only contributes 0.2% of the GDP. The real estate only contributes 2% of the GDP. Tourism contributes 12.7%. That's how big tourism is. You can't go on a place in the Philippines that doesn't have a tourism site. All of our places in the Philippines, may it be cities or municipalities, have tourism sites. Quarter of a trillion in the first half of the Philippines year in 2019 is by tourism. So quarter of a trillion is our income by January to June of this year. That's really big for a very small country. And it employs, uh, and there's an estimate that by 2022, there would be 12 million tourists going to the Philippines. As of now, there are like 7.2 million on the record that goes to the Philippines. By 2022, it's estimated to almost double. Uh, however, tourism is a very big industry. However, the problem that I see in the Philippines is that this industry is controlled and benefited by only a few people. Uh, Rani Hamdi, in his article, said, For many, the idea that a few families can control a whole industry is unthinkable, unfair, actually galling. In the Philippine tourism, it is entrenched in the sight of a jeepney. No one thinks of it at all. So it becomes normal to the point that people no longer question, why is it that Lake Cebu a very beautiful place. Uh, its economy largely depends on tourism, but only three or five families benefit from this much, those who own the hotels and the resorts. Why are people who own, literally, Lake Cebu are not rich, but those who have the capital to put up resorts in Lake Cebu are very rich? Uh, I think there's something wrong, but in the Philippines, no one talks about it. It's just like as common as it is. Um, so my concept uh, of the business is called the Kubotel. Kubo from the word Bahay Kubo, which is the common houses that uh, we have in the Philippines. I've lived in a Kubo before because I've also grown up in the mountains. If you see documentaries of children walking three hours just to reach the school, so I'm one of them uh, when I was in elementary. Uh, the concept of of Kubotel, community hotel, is Bahay Kubo plus the hotel. So these are the examples of the Bahay Kubo and we turn it into hotels. In Samal Island, in Davao, we actually have this already. Kubotels, we call it Kubotel. So it's just like a normal house and you turn it into a hotel. Uh, establishment of community hotels owned and managed by the local families of famous tourism sites. This is actually a concept derived from Airbnb. So, like, if you have a kubo, you have this nipahat, uh, you let tourists rent it. Uh, and that's how you earn. So, it's like an uh, indigenous version of Airbnb. Uh, the Filipinos, aside from being happy people, are also known for our hospitality. So, my point is why not use of this hospitality to help communities, this part of our culture, uh, to help communities earn from being hospitable. Uh, it has three phases. First is the Bayanihan, 
if you're not familiar with the Bayanihan, it's part of the culture of the Filipinos to come together to build something. Uh, I personally experienced this myself when my family had to relocate uh, from a place to another. A group of 20 to 30 men carried our house and literally brought it to another uh, place. So that's what we call Bayanihan. This is an example of how a Bayanihan happens. So if you have a kubo, you transfer it to a place. Also, if there are newlyweds or there are new people in the community, what the com community does is we come together and we cut bamboos and we build houses for the newlywed couples or the new people that we welcome in our community. So the kubotels will also be made through the Bayanihan system. Uh, it's the people in the community who will build this kubo with their uh, own materials and, and their own strengths and whatnot. Uh, there will also be hospitality trainings because uh, my concept of Kubotel is I uh, should pass the standards of the hotel and, and accommodation industry. So uh, this will be uh, take, taken charge by the government. And finally, financial literacy aspect of, of this, how to handle the income that they have through the Kubotel project. So to sum it up, uh, peace and other issues in the community have always been we tried to resolve in this model, government securing peace for the communities. However, we should shift on a new model. It should be communities securing peace for their communities. Only a disclaimer, the project doesn't say that it will really resolve the peace conflict in the Philippines or if this is the answer for the peace conflict in the Philippines and that. But my point is, uh, this could be a proof that actually money isn't that bad because it helps. And what's our target or our goal should be to be giving it to more people. So this is a concept of shared economy that it should be the community who benefits from the nature that it has, the beauty that it has. Uh, and Many people are already very rich and are still becoming rich and richer and richer. Study says the top ten most, uh, the, the top ten richest persons in the world earns around twenty-four million dollars per day, and they become twenty-four million dollars per day richer. Uh, through this model, we give the opportunity to those who have not, who don't have the opportunity, and and would hopefully also aid them in trying to have a safer and a more productive community. So that's the Kobotel concept and we will be trying to launch it by January next year in Lake Cebu, South Cotabato, Tabatan, South Cotabato, and in Samal Island in Davao region. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good. Thank you very much, Ronnie. Uh, he's one of our youth peace ambassadors. We're very proud of him. Uh, who would like to ask some questions? Make suggestions? Hi, sir, Rodney. Good morning. Uh, I really like the concept of Kubotel. Okay. So I myself, I'm an outdoor person. So usually I always go on a road trip with my families. So the place we've been to are not the common type of tourist spots. So we want to go to a place where there are few people. So um, I'd like to know, um, upon implementing the Kubotel, so first is how are you going to uh, manage like the, the waste, waste management of that certain area? Because, you know, um, in the Philippines, if a new place has been discovered after years, people will go to that place and then the place will be uh, sometimes um, uh, not, not destroyed or waste are getting high. So my question is, how are you going to manage the waste on that area? Thank you very much, sir. Um, actually, just to, to give you a view of what happens, it's like, it's like this is a place, then there are like 10 or 5, uh, or 10 or 20 
kubo in the area where you could book. And each kubo is owned and managed by families. So you could also rate it like this kubo is five stars. So this will be like booked more than those who are like of lower stars and whatnot. It works like Airbnb but in the indigenous way. Um, as of now, the, the way waste is managed is through still traditional way, like the, how communities manage their waste. But thank you for that. I think that would be a good also part of the project design that uh, it should be also emphasized there. Because yeah, most problems of tourism sites in the Philippines like La Presa, which mm -hmm. was very famous because uh, a local teleserie in the Philippines was able to feature it. But after two years of operating, it closed down. Like the entire La Presa place closed down because it became already too dirty. Uh, the beauty of, of La Presa was gone just two years of, of tourism. So thank you for the point. So uh, just an additional, uh, if your project has become successful, so I suggest you try to present it to other places. Like for example, in, in Matnog Sorsogon, there's this called Subic Beach. So when we went there, there's no structure. Wow. Just tent, trees, and nipa, kubo, small kubo. So after three years, when we got back to that island, there's already concrete structure that turned into hotel. So the, the scenery of the place is feeling, yeah. Okay, so I, I, I like the, the, the concept of Kubotel. So it will maintain the, the, the scenery of the place, especially if it is yeah, an island, if it's in the mountains. And another place is Sagada. When I went to Sagada, the, 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 the um, hotels are mostly on a native, but now if you go back to Sagada, more concrete, so you cannot see the mountains anymore, the farmlands. Okay. It's a comment, I guess. Uh, any other questions or comments? Anyone? No? Okay, so we're all going to go. Yeah, please, Dexter. Uh, sorry to delay our lunch. Uh, I'm interested in the concept. Uh, it's a beautiful concept, uh, surrounding. Um, this operation, will it be a private or uh, part in partnership with the government? Yeah, it will be in partnership with the government. Uh, the trainings, skills trainings for the families to manage their finances, hospitality, etc. will be managed by DTI and other government agencies. But the income per se would really be uh, from the community and for the community because they will be the ones building the kubos. They won't be spending so much because we've been doing these kubos for how many years already and we do it for free. Uh, right now, we want to also earn from that. Uh, that's how. Actually, we already have kubo hotels in Samal. We've set up 10, around 10 kubo hotels in Samal. And, and to the point of, sir, actually, that's really the main point of why we do this because uh, sometimes tourism attracts drastic changes in communities. So, yeah, when we went to Lake Cebu before, it's, it was just like forest and we've enjoyed the forest. Right now, there are already swimming pools yes. and and roads that are cemented and whatnot. Uh, it damaged the natural beauty. But with this, we preserve the natural beauty of the place. I've also been in a place in Batangas where we stayed there for three days. It was just beach. There's no concrete structure. It, it was beautiful to see just the beach and tents uh, in, in the area. So, sir, it's a partnership with government and private. It's public-private partnership. Thank you, sir. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck, Ronnie. Thank you very much.